Stealth Force The War on Terror is one of the most hilariously bad games you will ever play in your life, guaranteed. Developed by Atomic Planet Entertainment and released for the computer and PlayStation 2 in 2005, Stealth Force sets a whole new low for just how bad a first-person shooter and a video game in general can be. Everything about this game screams awful and unfinished. At best, it feels like a very, very early alpha build of a game that somebody shipped out as a joke to play on gamers everywhere, yet despite its groundbreaking level of awfulness, it's also hilarious to play, to the point where there's enough charm to it that I ended up enjoying it in some twisted way. Starting with the story, there's hardly any. The closest thing you have is a briefing at the start of all five levels that are in the game, there's no characters, certainly no character development, and hardly anything to move what very little of a story there is along. You play as a nameless, faceless, voiceless, special forces dude who goes out into the Middle East somewhere to stop a bunch of bad guys from building a dirty uranium bomb to do something evil with it. And you end up taking the uranium back, you kill all the bad guys, boom, you win the end. Now, as far as graphics go, in case you couldn't already tell, this is one of the worst-looking PS2 games I've ever seen. This isn't even a Unity asset flip before it was a thing. This is like a PS2 launch title still waiting for all the textures to load in, and this is on the emulator, by the way. It looks even worse if you play it on the console. And not only that, but the frame rate absolutely tanks any time there's smoke or dust particles on screen, or, heavens forbid, a fire. When any of these three things happen, expect to see the frame rate fall into PowerPoint presentation levels. How the frame rate could fall anywhere near below 30 frames, given the atrocious level of graphics we got going on here, I wish I knew. And you know what the best part is? This wasn't Atomic Planet's first time working on the PS2. It was their seventh. Anyways, as for the sound department, it's the least offensive thing Stealth Force has going for it. There's only one piece of music in the game that plays at the main menu, and nothing in the game itself, which I guess is better than the music being awful. And what little voice acting there is sounds like it was phoned in, but I guess it gets the job done given the circumstances. And as for the sound effects, yeah, I don't really have anything to say on them either. They're not great, don't get me wrong, but they're also not going to make you go running for the mute button on the TV. Like I just said, the sound department is the least offensive thing Stealth Force has going for it. But yeah, nothing really to say on the sound department. Gameplay, however, is where Stealth Force becomes next-generation levels of genre-defining bad. Literally from the moment you start playing, everything feels off. Camera movement and aiming mechanics are clunky enough to the point where if you want to line up a shot, more often than not you have to move your character rather than the camera, which was fairly common for shooters back in the PS2 days, so that doesn't bother me all that much. But what does bother me is that once you move a small distance in any direction, no matter where the camera is, it always resets itself right to the center of the screen, just like some of the old console shooters from back in the late 90s to the early 2000s. Except this time, there's no way to turn it off. Like I said, the camera only does this after you move a certain distance. If you're standing still, you can put the camera wherever you want and it won't reset, but at the same time, are you fucking serious right now? Like, why is this even in a game from 2005 to begin with? This is a relic of the late 90s, and it was completely outdated by the time 2001 rolled around. But the real problem starts when you go to fire at your first enemy. Not only do they have a crazy amount of health, but the guns in this game, I guarantee, will be the most breathtakingly inaccurate guns you will ever fire, bar none. I dare any of you out there to find me a shooter with a gun more inaccurate than the ones in this game. Like, look at this. Seriously, look at this. Every gun except the sniper rifle and pistol is like this. You see how fast the crosshair expands when I pull the trigger? Precise aiming is impossible. Like, I got nothing. My brain is drawing a complete blank because between this and the camera, there's nothing I can say to accurately describe the failure of humanity that is the shooting mechanics in Stealth Force. So you know what? I'm not even going to try. Instead, I'm going to tell you the secret on how to play this game. Because there is a way. No, it's not turning off the console and chucking the game into the trash, although that's certainly an option, but you can actually play it. Somewhat. And the secret is whenever you want to shoot an enemy, get close to them, 
put the crosshair in the general area of their head, and pull the trigger. But don't hold it down. Short controlled bursts are your friend here. You only need a couple shots to the head to bring them down, and the guns piss away ammo like it's going out of style. So there's no reason to go full auto. And once you get good at this, you'll be able to kill most enemies with a couple taps of the trigger. And you will be able to get close to them, because the AI in this game is some of the most dim-witted I've ever seen. I lost count of the number of times I would get into a fight with one of them, and their buddies would just stand there completely oblivious to the gunshots and explosions that were happening ten feet away from them. I could even drop a grenade right in the middle of a group, one or two of them would drop dead, and the rest would act like nothing happened. Other times they would walk right by me and not notice I was there, or they would creep towards me or shuffle around in a circle and do nothing even though they were pointing their guns at me. Almost like they were waiting for me to kill them. Yes, the AI in this game, at times, is so stupid they can't even fire their guns. In a first-person shooter, no matter how you define it, nearly every decision the AI made was mind-numbingly stupid. But that doesn't mean they don't have their moments, because they do. Even though it's rare, and random, there are times where it's almost like a switch got flipped, because the AI suddenly turned into a killing machine with superhuman accuracy. Although, even when this happens, there's still a good chance that half their buddies will stand around staring off into space like nothing's happening. So yeah, so far Stealth Force fails at pretty much all the basics of being a first-person shooter. So, what exactly is there to do in this game? Not much. You run through five of the most vaguely-looking Middle Eastern levels with a broken camera system and probably the worst shooting mechanics ever designed, and go from point A to point B, killing everything in your path. That's it. The level design offers next to no variety, it's as simple as it gets, and even if it wasn't, it wouldn't change anything with a game as broken as this. And that's pretty much it as far as the gameplay is concerned. I mean, if I really wanted to, there's a nigh-uncountable number of little things I could pick apart and make fun of all day. Every single part of this game is so badly crafted and put together, I could probably make a two-hour-long video picking out every little janky thing in this game, but I'm not going to, because first off, it's not worth the time it would take, and secondly, in order to truly understand just how hilariously awful this game is, you have to play it for yourself. Which is why I'm going to recommend you try out Stealth Force. I know that sounds strange, but I mean it, because this game is a fucking miracle. How something like this ever got approved to be sold on store shelves will forever boggle my mind. But that's exactly why I think it's worth playing. Like I just said, Stealth Force is a game where you have to play it to believe it. And if nothing else, it makes a great gag gift for Christmas, or a prank, or something like that. But before I end this review, I'm gonna do something a little different. I already gave you a couple tips on how to play if you want to for whatever reason, so I'm gonna give you a few more. First, only use the M16, AK-47, and the saw. And if you have to shoot long range, the sniper rifle. But there's only a handful of times you have to do that. Avoid every other weapon, especially the shotgun. This is the most useless shotgun I've ever seen in a game. And the funny thing is, it's absolutely lethal in the hands of the enemy. They could kill you in like three hits easy, but you can't hit the broad side of a mountain with it. Second, if you want to use the grenade launcher on the M16, make sure your grenade lands either right next to or right on the enemy you want to kill, because the grenades in this game have almost no splash damage. Yeah, they're almost as useless as the shotgun, but at least you can get a kill with them. It might take a little practice getting good with them because they travel in an arc, but they're not that tough to aim. Third, play it on the emulator. Save states are going to be a lifesaver here. And as far as I can tell, Stealth Force was only released in Europe, and PS2 games are not region-free last time I checked. Also, watch out for fences. Sometimes you or the enemy can shoot through them, sometimes you can't, and sometimes only one of you can. It's completely random, doesn't seem to have a rhyme or reason to it. So if you want to try actually playing it, as long as you follow my tips, you should be able to get through some of it at least. Most people will probably quit before they get through the first level, but I can see some people getting through the first three levels, because those aren't so bad. There's plenty of medkits, and to the game's very slight credit, it doesn't prevent you from going back to any area you've already cleared. 
so as long as you can remember where the medkits are, you should have a decent chance. Once you get to level 4, though, the game takes a nosedive. The entire thing takes place in cramped hallways where there's no room to move around, hardly any medkits, almost no cover, and the bad guys now have shotguns. And level 5? Yeah. If you don't quit by level 4, it's almost guaranteed you'll quit here. Especially considering the ending isn't worth it. So if you want to try it, there's a download link to a ROM page in the description. Happy gaming. Alright kids, thanks for watching. If you're already subbed to the channel or are about to, be sure to hit the bell so you get notified when I post a video, hit the like button, and give me some feedback. I don't care if it's good or bad.